So we had uh, previously defined chemistry as being the scientific study of matter and its transformations. And by transformations we meant the changes that matter undergoes. One type of change that matter can undergo is a physical change. These are changes that do not result in the change in the composition of the sample, i.e. that is that a, a new um, component, a new substance is not produced when a physical change occurs. Examples of physical changes include subdivision, which is simply a um, sophisticated way of saying dividing the sample into smaller pieces, i.e. cutting it up, and changes of state. Um, examples of changes of state are boiling, melting, and sublimation, which is the change from a solid directly to a gas without going through a liquid phase. And an example of a substance that undergoes sublimation is carbon dioxide, Carbon dioxide changes from the solid phase directly to the gaseous phase without going through a liquid phase. And for this reason, solid carbon dioxide is referred to as dry ice because you can use it to cool things like ice creams and um, sodas. And it'll, it'll go directly from the solid phase to the gas, gaseous phase. And so as a consequence, your box won't get soggy because there's never a liquid phase. So chemical changes are those that result in a change in the composition of the sample. Examples would include combustion, i.e. burning something, corrosion, a metal rusting, or decomposition where a single substance changes and decomposes into a variety of other substances. So all of these changes have in common that new substances or at least one new substance is produced. So they're the changes that matter can undergo. We can also cl classify matter ac not according not only to its properties, but according to whether it is a pure substance or a mixture. So pure substances are those that cannot be separated into different kinds of matter by any physical means. doesn't matter how we cut it, distill it, filter it, or sort through it, we can't separate a pure substance into different kinds of matter. And the reason is, is because it's a pure substance, there's only one kind of matter present. Conversely, a mixture is a physical combination, that is not a chemical combination, but just a mixture, a physical combination of two or more pure substances. And the components in a mixture can be separated by physical means. For example, we can filter or we can distill to separate the components. And an example of how we might separate out a mixture is simply using a colander to separate water from a solid. So unlike pure substances, mixtures might have a variable composition. For example, the strength of a cup of coffee can be varied. Put more coffee in, you get a stronger coffee. If you're mixing alcoholic beverages, you've had a tough day, you might put a second shot in and get a stronger drink. Okay. Similarly, the color of a paint, Every, anyone who's ever bought paint knows that you buy white paint and that a pigment is added. The more pigment you add, the brighter the color of the paint. Mixtures may be further defined as being either homogeneous or heterogeneous. Homo means same, hetero means different. Heterogeneous mixtures have very visibly different phases. That is that we can see that there is a combination of a solid with a gas or a liquid with a solid. There's clear distinct phases. They're also defined by um, the fact that a sample of one region may have a very different composition from a sample from a different region. So um, examples of heterogeneous mixtures would include such things as sand, where we can see if we was to take a sample over here, we would get a black grain. If we were to take a sample over here, we would get a white grain. And we could envisage a procedure of using different um, um, screens with different um, pore sizes in them to separate out the different size particles in the sand, or we could sort through by hand and physically separate the different components in the mixture in sand. A more sort of everyday example would be something like vegetable soup or perhaps trail mix or a pizza, where if we take, we can visibly see that there are different phases. There's a solid phase, there's a liquid phase, but 
Additionally, if we took a sample over here, we might get a piece of potato. If we take a sample over here, we'd get a piece of carrot. You can see that depending on the region where we would sample, we would get a different composition. So we classify this as being a heterogeneous mixture. In a homogeneous mixture, a sample of any part of the mixture is identical to any other sample, and there's only one phase present. So examples, common examples are alloys, things such as bronze and brass, which are homogeneous mixtures of different metals. Or another example of a homogeneous mixture is a solution, which is where we take a substance and we dissolve it in a solvent, i.e. such as sugar dissolved in water. If we stir this, this um, water here, the sugar will dissolve, and it doesn't matter whether we sample the top or the bottom, the composition will be the same, and there will be only one phase present. So, if we define matter as everything that has mass and occupies space, and then we can define there are mixtures and there are pure substances. Mixtures may have a variable composition. They can be strong, they can be weak, they can, we can vary the proportions of the parts. The components of the mixtures are not chemically altered, they're just physically mixed together. We can separate the components of the mixture by a physical mean. Filtration, physically sorting, distillation would be another example. Mixtures can be divided into two categories, homogeneous mixtures that have the same composition throughout and there's only a single phase present. Alternatively, we can have heterogeneous mixtures which do not have um, the, the same composition throughout and there may be distinct different phases present or distinct distinguishable components present. Pure substances have a fixed composition. There's only one thing present. We can't vary the amounts of the components. They can't be separated into simpler substances by, by physical methods. Okay? And the composition of one part of a pure substance is identical to the composition of another part of a pure substance. Okay, so that concludes lecture one. Um, we have some uh, homework you need to revise the material that we went through today because there will be a short quiz at the beginning of class on Wednesday. I have scheduled some OWL problems online so you need to register for um, the OWL system and you need to go to our book there and complete the problems that I have assigned. In addition you should work through the end of chapter exercises 1.1 through 1.28 before Wednesday's class. Thank you. That concludes lecture one.